Hello there everybody, this is Krista and welcome back to Crochet Witch Tarot and my December excitements. <laughs> Gosh, it has taken me a bit to build up to filming this one because I feel like this month went by so quickly that I couldn't even wrap my head around like what, what did I do this month? What happened this month? I just could not remember. So. We dug, we dug in our little brain <laughs> and came up with some things to share today. So let's just get right into it. Starting with memories, I've got two highlights of the month and I feel like I'm forgetting stuff, so, but we're going to go with these two. First is that I took my first ever pottery class. It was so much fun. I went with a few of my friends to a local ceramic studio and we all got to sit at um, pottery wheels all lined up and <laughs> there were two amazing owners of the store who showed us how to work the wheel and really got us <laughs> moving along to a point where us as beginners could make something usable. So I ended up making a bowl, a cup, and a flower pot. So those are currently getting fired. <laughs> so we haven't gone back to glaze them yet. Um, so I do not have them to show, but I'm sure they will show up in a future favorites when I have them in my hands because that'll be really, really cool. Other memory is I had a cookie baking day with some of my friends as well. Um, at our house. It was really, really a lot of fun. Um, one of my friends came with her young daughter, so she got to put sprinkles on all the cookies, and there were just <laughs> there were sprinkles and cookie dough everywhere. It was so much fun. <laughs> it's one of those things where it was just like the mess, the mess didn't matter. It was it was just the fun we were having. But we made some really, really cool cookies that we got to give to the rest of the library staff and that was a lot of fun. That is the last memory I have to share, but again, it's really just more that this month was such a blur that I'm just not even remembering like what was November, what was December. Those were the, that's what stuck out in my head. So anyway, let's get into some random favorites. For starters, I didn't even list this. I just looked down and remembered, I have to show this. I got a new phone case this month. <laughs> My old one had been cracked for like months. <laughs> it's just one of those things. It, a lot of things I will replace pretty quickly if it breaks. Phone case, not one of them. I can live with a broken phone case for quite some time. But with the Black Friday sales, uh, it was too good of a deal to pass up. So I got a new one and look at how cute this is. This is a Beatrix Potter illustration. It is from Peter Rabbit, which is one of my favorite storybook worlds, I guess you could say. It's not really one book. It's a few books, but I just love Beatrix Potter as a person. I love her artwork. I think it's fantastic. And so now I get to carry it around with me all the time, and I love that. Um... Next random favorite is a little ornament hanging thing that my sister got for me for Christmas. It is this felted blue jay because I have my blue jay army. <laughs> I just think this is such a pretty thing. This is from Mayan Hands. That is the company name. Now she got this at, oh gosh. I can't think of the, it was a, I had to sit regular. I was sitting on my feet and my feet were falling asleep. <laughs> it was, now I look low. Oh well. Oh well. Um, focus here. Yarn Festival, really big one in New York. Rhinebeck. The Rhinebeck Wool and Sheep Festival, question mark, something like that. They have these to sell every year and I guess each year there's a different I don't know if it's a bird every time but different ornaments so last year was 
a cardinal and this year it was a blue jay. So I love having that. That has been hanging over here. Alrighty. One more random favorite is I've started a new ritual of sorts with myself and that has been afternoon tea. So this really came in at the very end of the month. Um, right? Yes. I might be cheating a little bit. This might have been January. I think it was at the very end of December. The idea took place in December. <laughs> so I really love drinking tea, but I almost never do because just couldn't really figure out the time of day to do it. <laughs> because it, it's coffee in the morning. That's just it. I, I have a cup of coffee in the morning and that is not going to change. And I was having tea at night, but I just can't have it too late. It wasn't working. It dawned on me, oh, I could just have it right when I get home from work. <laughs> that would be reasonable. And so I've started that practice with myself. It's been really a nice way to get home from work and just immediately do something for myself to kind of settle into being home, transition out of that work brain into a relax and relaxation kind of state, and it's been really nice. Part of that, though, is I wanted to have tea from a teapot. Usually I've got my, like, stovetop kettle, and I would just use, like, tea bags and a mug, but I, I wanted, I wanted it to be an experience, you know? So I had loose leaf tea, I just needed the teapot. So I went to the thrift store, a few roads down really from us, and got this beautiful teapot from there. You could hear it clanging around. But this is a Arthur Wood teapot, which is an English brand, I believe. And I got it for $2. Do you believe that? I mean, probably best deal I've ever gotten. But that has been so nice to make tea and it just felt like it feels like a special thing I'm doing for myself every day now. So I really wanted to share that because I'm just I'm very excited. I'm sure I will talk about it again in my next favorite video because I'll have a full month of hopefully doing it. I'm hoping. But yeah, that is my last random favorite. I oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. Okay. So this is another end of the month <laughs> thing. For Christmas, I visited my parents and they kept quite a few toys from our childhood, it turns out, in our basement, which used to be our playroom. I kind of figured these were there, so I went looking for them, found them, and I brought them back home here, but it is... of Littlest Pet Shops. If anybody else played with these as a kid, you have to let me know. But I just thought about them very randomly a few weeks ago and just, I don't know, just put, put a bug in me somewhere that I just wanted to see them again. So I brought them here and they are so cute. I have to show some of my favorites. We have this skunk. So they're these little toys with these they're like bobbleheads and they got magnets on the bottom they are just so cute anyway my idea though behind having these little pet shops is if you've been watching my videos for a bit i'm sure you will know that i really enjoy working with animal energies for my year ahead spread this year actually i pulled from the pythonic tarot but then also pulled a card from the upcoming animal oracle that my friend Andy is making. I have a prototype of that. So I pulled an animal energy for the month as well. I, it's just something I've really enjoyed this past year. But I tend to do better when I have some sort of anchor to focus on that energy. So for me, historically, I guess you could say, that has been working either just with card images or I have my skunk skull or raccoon skull and that really is helpful for me.
But of course, as much as I would love to have ethically sourced <laughs> bones of all the animals that I work with, one, I seem to have a hard time coming across them. Two, it gets pricey. So that's, that's a work in progress. In the meantime, though, I thought I could use these cute animal figures as that energy work anchor. So we've got skunk, we've got a frog. <laughs> Can't, they're so cute. Um, pig, how cute is this pig? Oh my gosh. A favorite is this spider. Oh my gosh, is she so cute. I'm so happy to find a spider. And last one I will show is... Oh no, I gotta show two more. I gotta. All right. We've got an owl. But then also, look at this seahorse. Are you kidding? I mean, that is so cute. I can't. So I'm really excited about this. I've not gotten into incorporating them into any sort of practice yet, but I will, I will keep you all updated on how that's going. I'm very excited about it. Could I possibly get distracted by just wanting to play with these? Yes, but who knows? Oh, hold on. The snail, look at the snail. Oh, oh is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? Oh my gosh, the cute aggression, I can't. All right, that was my last random favorite. Let's get into books now. Very sorry, I realize I'm like bouncing all over the place in this video. I just cannot seem to sit comfortably today, and that's all right. Book favorites. The first one I will talk about, oh, there's stuff on this one, um, is an audiobook I was listening to actually. So I don't have the physical book to show, it was an audiobook I found on Hoopla, um, which some libraries will have access to. I need to just sit still for a second. Hold on, I'm gonna adjust the camera so I can lower it and I can sit like a normal person. <laughs> okay, we are crisscross applesauce. I'm comfortable now. <laughs> we can we can resume and maybe I can sit still. Audiobook I've been listening to throughout December. I'm not quite finished yet, but it is amazing. Let me pull it up so I can show. It is called The Old Magic of Christmas. Who is it by, though? That's always the question. I shall never remember. Old Magic of Christmas by Linda. Radish? This, this is what it looks like. No. Nope. Oh, notifications. <laughs> so this is a really cool book that goes through really old traditions and stories surrounding Christmas time, Yule time. And it's really cool because it kind of goes into the not background, but it shows where a lot of the current Christmas traditions and stories come from. And I, at least the ones we have in America are very like happy and nice, all these things. But the root of their stories, like where they kind of transform from, some of those stories are like so scary. So cool though, it's so much fun. All these folk tales, so I really enjoyed listening to those. And I do, I think probably next year I might get a physical copy of the book because there's some really cool like recipes or crafting ideas uh, that, you know, listening to I didn't really get a grasp of. But anyway, keeping on that wagon of Yuletide stories, I got this book this year, which is the Krampus and Other Yuletide Tales, collected and illustrated by Faina Laura, who... I'm a huge fan of all of her work. I have her Yuletide Tales Lenormand. So this was really fun because it uses her illustrations from that Lenormand and pairs them with stories. So in a sense, it's kind of... So here, like we have the snow child. These illustrations show up on a card. 
This is the tree card in the Lenormand, but it's the story of Oh, I can't think of the name of it. It was the story of, I think, like the Christmas, the little tree or something like that. I'm not finding it now. But what was really cool about this book was I could pull a card from the Lenormand deck and read a story for the day and have that almost be like this crossover between cardomancy and bibliomancy in a way, um, which was really a lot of fun. So, love that. My last book favorite is one I've just started getting into, but was a lovely Yule gift from my friend Amanda at Venus and Virtue here on YouTube. It is the Encyclopedia of Norse and Germanic Folklore, Mythology, and Magic. This is such a cool book. It truly is an encyclopedia of all sorts of figures and things from Norse and Germanic folklore which I'm really wanting to learn more about. So this is super cool and I love reference type books. Those are the books I tend to want to have in my book collection because they're the ones I use the most. So really excited about this one. I've really been enjoying it. Um, yes, I think that is my last book favorite. Now we are left with the decks. And I think we're going to turn it, turn it around so that we can see the decks top down because this month I had some really standout pairings that I want to show. So not necessarily specific favorite decks I worked with, but combinations. And so I think it'd be really cool to look at those. So I will see you turned around in a minute. Okay, and we are back. So let's start with... A pairing that, now that I'm thinking about it, I might have shown in my November <laughs> excitements video, but I can't remember. So, regardless, this is a combination I used tons in December for mm, more a spiritual work practice, I would say, but that is the Death Doula Oracle paired with the Sonia Tarot. Now we're going to do this real official-like. <laughs> this is how uh, Dawn Michelle always shows her pairings, and I think it, I, I just love watching her videos when she does that because, I don't know, it just looks so nice. Oh, is that... Oh, that's too bright. Is it? Mm, or do we like it? I think it's okay. So, I really really have been loving this pairing something about the kind of i don't know open space of these cards now i don't mean that in a imagery type way because some of these pictures there's a lot going on but it's just this feeling of this feeling of openness, because especially in the Somnia Tarot, we have these figures who are on this clearly empty beach. And that setting, and putting myself in that setting when I read with this deck, it really has this very specific feeling of... Openness is the only way I could seem to describe it to it barrenness almost that is really interesting and I just think it pairs so well with this death doula oracle both are I would say photography based Samia Tarot definitely is the death doula is a bit more you know manipulated photography but I think that little bit of contrast is really cool they both have these really nice white borders that aren't too much and just they just pair together so beautifully, but they also really read so cohesively. I really, really enjoy this combination for connecting to any sort of darker feminine energy. I just find this works really, really well. I've been using it to connect with 
a guide that really exists in that realm for me. And it's just been really wonderful. The Death Duel has been such a standout deck for me this year that I always start by pulling one of these and it just gives such a strong message within the two sentences are, that are in the guidebook. Sometimes maybe it's more than two sentences, but it's a, it's a short, short and sweet message. And then I just really find that the Somnia Tarot does not, even though these pictures can be intense, it doesn't overpower what's happening in the Death Duel Oracle for me. I really, really love using the Somnia Tarot to just kind of expand upon whatever's going on with the Death Doula message or, you know, provide some clarity if that's what I need. It's a really awesome pairing. I've really been loving this one. So that is the Death Doula Oracle and the Somnia Tarot. The next pairing I really, really loved working with throughout the month of December was my Cottage Witch Oracle with one of my favorite tarots, The Forest of Enchantment. I just am finding that for me, these pair so perfectly, which makes a lot of sense <laughs> considering that the Forest of Enchantment just feels like as close to my perfect tarot deck as you can get. It just feels like a deck that really gets me. And of course, the Cottage Witch deck is going to get me because <laughs> I made it to make sense to me, so... I'm really excited how well visually these work for me though. There's just this kind of sense of comfort in a way, but certainly not in a hug deck kind of way. That's not really how I feel about either of these decks. Both of them feel, mm, it's more like Lovingly confronting. Because <laughs> I will say, the only thing with using, I have found with using an oracle deck that I have created is that it really calls me out. <laughs> Which makes sense because, you know, the messages and ideas are coming from my own lived experience. But that is kind of a purpose that the Forest of Enchantment serves for me as well because I feel like it just knows me and connects with me on this deep level. It really tends to call me out in all the right ways and just know exactly what's going on, what I need to hear. It's really interesting because I do find that it feels so fairy tale like, which is a realm I really love to exist in. I love stories. I love fairy tales. I love anything magical of that sort. And so, what I find with both of these decks is they bring me into that magical world I really, really love, really find a lot of comfort in but has me doing the hard work within that space, if that makes sense. Because, you know, the places we find comfortable are where we tend to retreat to. And so that's what I really love about this, is within that retreat, I'm not able to hide from the things that I need to be working on. And that's really the purpose these have been serving for me. Look at the double amphibious <laughs> creature going on here. We've got a frog and a toad. This ace of boons, ace of coins, is my favorite of all time. I love the message of that card. Oh my gosh. So this was another combo that I really, really enjoyed working with throughout December, and that is the Forest of Enchantment Tarot and the Cottage Witch Oracle. Okay, and the last pairing I have to show you today that just 
really, really blew me away during the month of December is the Seasons of the Witch Yule Oracle, which was definitely my most used Oracle deck of December, paired with the Intuitive Night Goddess Tarot. I was not expecting these to pair as well as they did, but these decks were magical together. Okay. Something about the kind of darkness of the intuitive night goddess tarot really just visually and journeying into this particular season of the witch, which is representative of that darker half of the year to me, really just, it was so magical. I also love with the intuitive night goddess tarot that we have these kind of white starry backgrounds, but to me also really feels like snow. It just looks like snow to me, which I love. And so these just paired together so magically. I loved the kind of, I would say, it, it definitely has this stronger feminine energy to it, which works well personally for me. And I really, I really loved reading them that way. I think the guidebook messages worked so well together. This pairing was just so good. I love how the artwork looks together. I, it was so unexpected. I really never thought that these would look as good as they did. I really expected the Intuitive Night Goddess just visually to need a bit of a mm, simpler looking Oracle deck. I thought this one could have been a little bit too busy or whatever, but I think they work so, so well together. I really enjoyed this pairing throughout the whole month and it probably was my most used pairing, if I'm being honest. I just thought these decks were fantastic and I'm sure they will be making appearances still in January because these are not ones I want to put away yet. Really love them. So that is the Intuitive Night Goddess Tarot and the Seasons of the Witch Yule Oracle. So this is where I usually talk about the decks I am excited to work with in the next month. Now I have been doing deck selection. I was doing some lives or started with videos at the beginning of the month to pick out my decks, which is so much fun and is not something I am stopping. There just was not enough time <laughs> with the end of December, beginning of January. But I still wanted to show what I'm going to be working with this month. So I thought I would just do that here because of course, this is what I'm excited to be working with. Now, this month, just based off my own feeling and what I what I just was wanting to do is really going to be focused on the tarot deck. So I'm not really, I have some Oracle decks picked out that really are just favorites of mine, but nothing I'm necessarily getting to know. Because I really wanted to focus on, I have a few tarot decks that came in within the month of December that I just really want to spend some time with, spend some time getting to know. And I also wanted to pull out some of those decks I showed in my deck reconnect video to start that process with them, to start reconnecting. So that being said, let's go over the decks. We will start with the new getting to know ones and then we will go into the reconnection of sorts. So the first deck I am working with in January is the Meraki Tarot. I am very excited about this one. I think it is so, so beautiful. I love just all the different things going on in, th in these cards. There are animals and crystals and astrological associations. It is just so beautifully done. I love the colors. It's really, really amazing. I don't have the big workbook that goes with this deck. 
and I am considering getting it because I do want the expanded information for the miners because I think with the keyword the, the keyword cards we get I do think that we only get like the crystal associations things like that with the majors not positive I haven't really checked my extra cards but I do think that's the case besides the point I've loved the work I've done with this so far I've had really cool readings it's just such a beautiful deck and really one that I feel like I want to spend a solid amount of time with because I feel like we could have this really cool bond, but it's just going to need some work, I think. So that is the Meraki Tarot, and that is the new second edition. Next, we've got the Theodore Pavlov Tarot which is another really beautiful deck. This is the new mass market version put out by US Games. And I just love the artwork on this deck. It's very different for me. This is not something I would usually lean towards, I feel, but there's just something about it. I really do love the, it's not like not the simple, the simple coloring of it, I'll say, because the artwork is definitely not simplistic but the these simplified colors where it's really just one aspect of these images that are colored and I think it's it's been really interesting reading with it so far to kind of take note of what is being colored versus left black and white in these images it's been really really cool I I've really been loving getting to know this one so far. I really enjoy the guidebook. It's just a solid, a solid RWS, you know? I just think it's so beautiful. And I think the quality of this mass market version is really beautiful as well. Oh, look at that hermit card. It just has some of the most beautiful majors. I really, really enjoy a lot of the majors. The minors too, but just a lot of standout majors. So that is the Theodore Pavlov Tarot. And last but not least in the new deck realm, we've got the Taroki by Mr. Freiborg. This is one that I pre-ordered and I'm so glad I did. This is the first kind of mm, kind of more classic pip deck that I have ever owned. And I've really, really been loving reading with this one. Now I'm blanking on like, mm, I'm wanting to call it a Marseille deck, but of course it is a, it's labeled Taroki. <laughs> Oh my gosh, am I sounding like just ridiculous right now? <laughs> if you could see me, I'm actually like fully blushing off camera because I'm like, I don't know. Wait, I don't, I literally don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Regardless, uh, what would you call this? Because <laughs> I've been wanting to call it a Marseille and it's definitely not because I think Taroki is its own system. Jeez Louise, you know. It... <laughs> At least I'm self-aware, you know, <laughs> when I'm saying ridiculous things or just talking absolutely out of my butt. At least, at least I'm self-aware, right? Right. Anyways, I've really been loving this. I've never been drawn to any sort of classic style of deck like this before, but this one was just it for me and it totally has sparked my interest in learning these kinds of systems. I think that's why I have Marseille in my head because it really has gotten me thinking about Marseille as well. But love this one. I think it's so fantastic. Love the pink and blue backs. I think that is so much fun. I've been really enjoying this one. And again, it's just so different for me, which I have a lot of fun with every once in a while. Alrighty, now. Mm. This one is kind of a, like, 
new slash reconnect, but it is the Oak Ash and Thorn Mini. So I do have, I've had the full size for around maybe a year, a year and a half now, and absolutely love it. Let's bring the camera in. <laughs> but as I've said, it just, it's, it's hard for me to handle. So I, I used it tons, but I always knew, like, I feel like I could, I would use it even more if it just was easier to shuffle. And so then the mini came out, I was sold. And I'm so glad to have this. It is so much more easy. So much more easy. Is that the right way to say that for me to handle? Yes. No, that's right. So much more easy for me to handle. No, why does it sound wrong? <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man. So much easier for me to handle. Yeah, that's definitely the right way to say it. Okay. All right. Um, so in a sense, like, this is like getting to know a new version, but also a bit of a reconnect because I feel like I'm bonding with this deck all over again and really just getting off to this great start be purely because of the shuffle, which probably sounds kind of silly, but now for a deck that I was already using a good amount, since having this deck, I've probably used it at least once a day. It's going to be one of those I feel like that is just going to be a real top favorite for me. And I'm very, very excited about it because I, I do love this deck. So that is the Oak Ash and Thorn, the new mini version. All right, now we are getting into the reconnect slash connect. Well, I don't know what category this one is in. This is my Wildwood Tarot. I really have this one out just because... I love it. I really love it. And I wanted to spend some more time with this deck just doing regular readings with it. I am following the year in the Wildwood. I have been for a few months now and I've been absolutely loving doing that practice. But in doing so, I kind of lost sight a little bit of using this deck just to do readings for myself. And so I wanted to add it into this group of tarot decks in a, in a little bit of a sense of a reconnect in using this deck in that way. I did trim off the borders of mine, and I really do like how the artwork looks borderless like that. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm really excited to have this one out to just read with, you know? And I think what I'm going to do is just have out different images of the cards, really for that uh, walk in the Wildwood, year in the Wildwood, whatever it's called. But yeah, this is a longtime favorite. I'm excited to be reconnecting in this way. Amazing, love it. All right, that is the Wildwood Tarot. Next, we've got the Terra Volatile. This is one, like, I just want to connect with this one so badly <laughs> because I really do enjoy it. So I did end up taking out the extra suit because I kind of feel like that could have been what was stopping me from bonding a little bit because it was just this, like, almost pause in the reading when I had to look up those meanings instead of what I usually do where I will pull the cards get a meaning for myself and then go into the guidebook to kind of see what the creator has to say. So I'm excited to be using the deck now sans <laughs> um, vessel suit and kind of see how that goes. Because I feel, I just feel like there's work for me to do with this deck, which is why I've not let it go. It's just... We're just, we're going through a rough patch, you know? <laughs> so that is the Terra Volatile Tarot. I mean, it's a gorgeous deck, isn't it? I'm really excited about it. I think, I think this, this will be good. Last but certainly not least, we've got Pagan Otherworlds. This one, I've already, I've been using it, um, a bit since the month started already and I'm already like yeah of course I mean I love this one. Do 
Do I feel like we need to connect a little bit more? Yes, but I don't think it's gonna be hard by any means. Truly, I think I just needed it to have it out in a smaller selection of decks so that I would just use it more. And that's really also my aim for this month is I really pared down on the number of decks I personally tend to pick out for the month so that I can make sure I really had the time to spend with each of these decks. And my goal is I do have other decks, you know, that I will use throughout the month. I only use these decks for my morning readings that I do every day, but I do make it a goal that for other readings that I want to do that come up, I try and use these decks as well so that they really get plenty of play. But, I mean, this is a classic. I love this deck. I love the artwork. It also has that kind of openness to it, which is really interesting to me. But we just need some more time together, you know? So that is the Pagan Otherworlds Tarot. And I think that is the last thing I have to show today. So I hope you are all having a wonderful beginning to your month. And I would love to know some of your favorites from this month. The exciting things that happened in December. And I will see you all again very, very soon.